Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to a complete and detailed Nahida guide. As you guys know, Nahida is the newest character in Genshin Impact, the Dendro Archon, a five star Dendro Catalyst user who is absolutely broken. While in my last video, I covered why she's so strong and my favorite teams and showcases of her, in this video, I'm going to be covering everything you need to know regarding how to play her and build her efficiently, covering her best weapons, builds, teams, constellations, play styles, and everything else that you may be wondering. I do want to start by saying that Nahida is an incredibly fun and flexible character. There's a lot of depth into her kit, a lot of different ways you can play her and build her. So I'm going to do my best to cover everything you need to know in this video. But as always, if there's anything new I want to add, it will be in a pinned comment. So be sure to check that. With that said, as you know, I've had a lot of time to play Nahida on a media server before she came out, as well as test her on the live servers for many hours now, which is allowing me to get you guys this guide as fast as possible. Before we begin, I do want you guys to know that I do stream most nights on Twitch. Link in the description if you're interested. And with all that out of the way, let's talk about Nahida. All right, so starting things off, I want to go in detail on what Nahida's abilities actually do and how to get the most value out of them. While in my last video, I covered why she's so broken, Go watch that if you haven't already. Right now, I want to tell you guys how to get the most value out of her entire kit, how she actually works, and how you should be using her. First of all, I want to start by saying that her playstyle typically revolves around her elemental skill. This is a core part of her kit that will mark enemies when you use it and allow you to deal very powerful damage passively through its effect. In fact, you can either press or hold this ability. When you press it, it will mark enemies around you and deal a bit of dendro damage. And when you hold it, you will enter this aiming camera mode where you will mark all the enemies that you're looking at inside of your camera lens. Do keep in mind, the range of this ability is very long and also you can spin around before releasing it to mark enemies all around you, effectively giving it really good range and area of effect. Now once the enemies are marked however, you will gain access to a passive ability that will deal damage when you proc reactions regardless of what those reactions are. In fact, you can trigger this passive once every 2.5 seconds or even a bit faster when you use your elemental burst which we'll talk about next. And what will happen is even from off field, you can trigger this effect that will deal damage scaling on your attack but also your elemental mastery which is really important since other parts of her kit as well as dendro reactions also scale with elemental mastery but if that wasn't enough on top of the damage you will also be reapplying dendro every single hit you do from this passive will apply dendro onto enemies allowing you to proc even more reactions and have good dendro application even from off field if that wasn't enough this seed lasts for 25 seconds and your ability has a very low cooldown which is just really good because obviously seed lasting for a long time means you don't have to swap into nahida as often but also the fact that its cooldown is low means that if you defeat enemies let's say in the abyss and another wave of enemies spawn, you can always swap back into her and use your skill again to remark the new enemies. Now, if that wasn't enough, your elemental burst is also an ability that will buff your elemental skill. While your burst doesn't deal damage in it of itself, it will buff how your skills passive work when you are like marking enemies based on the elements of the other party members you're running. In fact, you'll get bonus effects for every pyro, electro, or hydro character you're running. You can stack these effects. So for example, you can have all three at once if you have pyro, electro, and hydro, and the effects get stronger if there are at least two party members of a specific element. What these effects do are the following. Pyro will increase the damage of your skills mark. Electro will decrease the interval trigger. So that will basically just allow you to apply dendro and deal damage more often. Instead of being every 2.5 seconds, it will be like around every two if you have two electro characters. And Hydro will increase the duration of your burst. Because of that, all three of these are nice with Electro being my personal favorite as it will allow you to spam more dendro. But what you need to know about this ability is that even its base duration is already longer than its cooldown, having 15 seconds of uptime with only a 13.5 second cooldown, meaning you can pretty much always have this burst up, especially considering its low energy cost as well. On top of just that, this elemental burst will increase your on-field party member's elemental mastery by 25% of your highest EM party member, with up to 250 EM being gained in this manner. Now, if you have a thousand elemental mastery, it will cap this out. You'll gain 250 EM to whichever active party member you're using, which is a very important thing to keep in mind. Another good reason to build elemental mastery on your Nahida is because of her second passive talent, which is absolutely amazing. In fact, you will gain bonus damage and crit rate based on how much elemental mastery Nahida has for a maximum of 80% damage bonus and 24% crit rate if you do manage to get a thousand elemental mastery. Because of that, a thousand EM can be something to look forward to or something to try to get, but any point after a thousand will be a lot less efficient. And also things like this are calculated based on your active EM, which means it also factors in buffs like your other passive talent and external sources, which we'll cover in the build section. So building her can be a bit more complicated than you think, which is why I'll cover it in great detail very shortly. Do keep in mind, however, that if you're playing your Nahida on field, this passive talent will buff your Nahida herself, which can allow you to go for less elemental mastery. For example, let's say you have 800. This passive will therefore give you 200, allowing you to get that full 1000 to get the maximum bonus from your passive talent. If that wasn't enough, while Nahida has really good damage and pretty decent dendro application from off field, she can also shine as an on field driver for reaction based teams where you don't have a character who can be on field or where you need more dendro application, like for example, in a Nilu Bloom team, which we'll talk about later, where Nahida can apply much more dendro 
Dendro because of the fact that she's a Catalyst user whose normal and charge attacks will apply Dendro to enemies. Because of that, you can either play her as an off-field support or as an on-field driver who can apply a ton of Dendro by using her attacks on enemies. And so because of that, Nahida has two distinct playstyles. You can either run her from off-field where her skill will constantly hit enemies every time you proc a reaction, reapplying Dendro, dealing good damage and supporting your team, enabling those Dendro reactions with decent Dendro application or running her on-field with much more Dendro application, making it a lot faster since you are also normal attacking and potentially charge attacking, as I mentioned, applying a ton of Dendro and being a driver for certain reaction-based team comps that we'll talk about in the team comp section later. Also, do keep in mind that the way you choose to play her does influence how you want to build her, both artifact and weapon-wise, which is why I'm going to be clarifying how you should build her depending on your playstyle. Lastly, before moving on, I want to say that your skill, since it's the main part of your kit, should be the main talent you're leveling up and you're prioritizing, with your elemental burst also being something nice to level after your skill. You can level your normal attacks if you use her on field, if not, you can ignore them. All right, now with all that said, let's finally talk about Nahida's best builds and go into a deep dive on which artifact sets and stats you want and how to build your Nahida based on what you have and what team you're running. Well, first of all, for the artifact sets you're going, the two general options are going to be either Deepwood Memories, the four piece, or the four piece of the Gilded Dream set. Now, while both of these sets are good, which one you run can depend on a few factors. A general statement that I want to give is that if you don't have Deepwood Memories on any of your party members, then Nahida can be a good Deepwood user as she will benefit from the Dendro damage bonus, but also be able to constantly decrease the opponent's Dendro resistance through her elemental skill, which constantly triggers both from on and off field. Because of that, I typically recommend running Deepwood on your Nahida. However, if you have another party member that can run Deepwood, like for example, a support who doesn't deal that much damage, like Zhongli, who can hit enemies through his pillar, Kokomi, or even Nilu, then they can run the Deepwood set, allowing your Nahida to go on a more offensive option like the four piece Guild of Dreams, which will give you just a ton of elemental mastery. In fact, you can gain up to 150 elemental mastery from the four piece and 80 from the two piece, which will give you the most personal damage overall, making it a bit better than Deepwood for your personal damage. Do keep in mind though, that if you don't have Deepwood on any other party member, then going Deepwood will just pretty much always be better. And honestly, it's usually by a big margin, with the main exception being in a Quicken team, where Deepwood is still a bit better on your Nahida, but it is more subset dependent because of the way your damage actually is distributed in that team comp. In general, which set you want to build, as I said, is going to be either Deepwood or Gilded. While you can usually pick based on which one has better substats, I would highly recommend having Deepwood on at least one party member, with it being very good on Nahida, if no one else can run it, which is oftentimes going to be the case. With that said, you can also mix and match two pieces like Gilded Dreams, Deepwood, and the Wanderer set, which gives you 80 elemental mastery, as does Gilded, picking whichever two pieces give you the best substats. Lastly, before moving on, I did want to at least mention the Milith set, uh, the four piece being viable for an off field build to purely buff your party member's attack, but I don't recommend it uh, for Nahida as you lose a lot of personal damage, which is why I would stick to Deepwood, Gilded, or mix and matching two pieces. Now, with that said, let's actually talk about what stats you want on your Nahida, as this part can get a little bit complicated and highly depends on many factors. In fact, while I mentioned in my last video that Elemental Mastery is very good on Nahida, and we saw that in the talent section as well, what is very important to keep in mind is how much Elemental Mastery you actually want. While you do cap out at 1000 EM for your passive, which gives you damage bonus and crit rate, and getting up to 1000 Elemental Mastery can be very good, it can also be a trap that people can fall into. The reason for this is because once you exceed 1000 EM, while it isn't useless, it just becomes way, way less valuable. And while 1000 seems like a lot, and it is, there are many external buffs that can give you EM to where the 1000 threshold can be closer than you actually think, with things like the Gilded Dream set, or supports like Sucrose, the Elegy Weapon, or the Instructor Artifact set, all being ways to give you Elemental Mastery, as well as Nahida's passive talent that can give you up to 250 EM, or 200 if you're running 800 EM, if you are running your Nahida on field, making it to where there's a lot of factors to consider when you're thinking about which main stats and substats you're actually trying to look for. Because of that, what are you actually looking for? Well, first of all, as with most characters, you want to make sure you have enough energy recharge to be using your burst as often as you need to. While this highly depends on what team you're running, you'll generally need around 120 to 140 energy recharge for most team comps. With that said, some teams can need even less energy recharge, whereas others might need a bit more, but typically staying in that 120 to 140 range and getting energy recharge on your substats is typically going to be the way to go, but again, test out what works for you. Once you have enough energy recharge though, then you can start looking for more offensive stats like elemental mastery, crit rate, crit damage, and elemental damage bonus, which can all be very good. Which one is better for you does depend on a few factors, which I'll go over right now. First of all, whether you're playing Nahida on or off field changes the stat priority for you. In fact, since a Nahida from off field is going to be getting basically all of her damage from her elemental skill, building elemental mastery is typically going to be your number one priority, at least until you have around a thousand effective EM. Because of that, stacking elemental mastery is ideal. However, a dendro damage bonus and crit rate 
and damage are about as good as elemental mastery, only usually being slightly worse. Because of that, because of how close they are in practice, picking what artifacts you have that have better substats is generally going to be the best way to go about building a Nahida. However, if your playstyle is more of an on-field Nahida, where you are spamming your normal attacks, since your normals also scale on damage bonus, crit, and your attack, not your EM, then going for things like a Dendro Damage Goblet and a crit rate or damage circlet, even more valuable than an off-field build, and usually being slightly better than Elemental Mastery. And so generally speaking, for an off-field build, you will stack Elemental Mastery, and for an on-field, you can go more for Dendro Damage and crit, but EM will still be very good, and again, I really want to take the time to emphasize this and make it clear, in both builds, going for whichever artifacts give you the best substats, between a Dendro Damage Bonus Goblet and an Elemental Mastery Goblet, which are both viable, and a Crit Damage, Crit Rate, or Elemental Mastery Circlet, which are all viable, is typically going to be the way to go, so please do keep that in mind when gearing your Nahida. Last thing I wanted to mention, that in a Nilu Bloom team, since you are just spamming Bloom as like all of your damage, Stacking Elemental Mastery on every single piece is going to be the way to go as EM becomes a lot more viable. So yeah, I hope I made this section clear. I had to re-record it many times because I didn't want to make it seem too confusing. But in general, your artifacts are very flexible. I recommend going EM Sands, then either EM or Dendro Goblet, and then EM or Crit Circlet, depending on your substats and depending on if you run her off or on field. Alright, now moving on, let's talk about what weapons you actually want to run on Nahida. Now, Nahida is a character who has a ton of good options, including good 5 stars and also really good free-to-play options that you can choose from. While that is good news because it means pretty much any player can have a good weapon for this character, it also can get a bit complicated as your exact weapon ranking will vary highly based on how you play her, especially whether or not you're running her on or off field. Because of that, I'm going to try to be as complete as possible in this section, going through all of the important weapons, as well as including a weapon ranking at the end. With that said, let's go. First of all, your best weapons DPS-wise are typically going to be the 5 stars, both the Thousand Floating Dreams, which is her signature, and the Kagura's Verity, which is Yai Miko's signature. While both of them are good in general, typically the new Teapot weapon, Nahida's signature, is going to be the best overall when you need Elemental Mastery, especially in an off-field team where your Nahida is playing a more supportive role. This is because you gain a ton of Elemental Mastery on its stat, and then your Nahida will also get buffed by the effect by gaining Elemental Mastery or Elemental Damage Bonus, depending on the element of the other party members that you're running. On top of that, you also gain 40 EM to all of your other party members, and it's just a pretty good option overall, but it isn't as important of a signature weapon as some others, so do keep that in mind, especially if you have other powerful weapons that we'll talk about. The first one of those that I want to mention is Kagura's Verity, which is Yaimiko's signature and has a ton ton of crit on its stat, as well as a good effect that will increase your damage every time you use your skill. In fact, stacking its effect can be very easy on field, as your skill has a low cooldown and you're spending a lot of time actively using Nahida. In fact, your elemental skill damage will be greatly increased the more you use your skill for a maximum of 3 stacks, and then if you manage to fully stack it, you'll gain elemental damage bonus, which is also very nice. This weapon is especially good, as I said, on field, but is also decent off field for just the raw amount of stats, but obviously you won't stack the effect as much, so it won't be quite as powerful. Also, I did want to mention the Lost Prayer, which is a really good on-field option as a 5-star if you have it, because it's been out for so long now that a lot of people might just have it. It gives you crit rate and has an effect that will buff you when you're on-field, so it is pretty nice for an on-field Nahida, but not quite as good as the other 5-stars. In general though, this shows the two type of weapons that you want, either Elemental Mastery weapons or crit weapons for your Nahida's damage, as going for attack, while weapons like Skyward Atlas can be viable, they aren't quite as good as other options as we'll see, because attack isn't quite as good on Nahida as EM or crit. Moving on, Nahida has some really good 4-star options that can all be like the best in their niche or the best 4-star options for you, depending on how you play her. First of all, Sacrificial Fragments is really good for a ton of Elemental Mastery, and is especially good for a generic off-field support build because of the sheer amount of EM that it gives you, as well as its pretty decent passive resetting your skill. Moving on, the Witsith is a really good weapon overall, as long as you can make use of its effect, which will give you either a bunch of attack, a bunch of Elemental Damage Bonus, or a bunch of Elemental Mastery, with the last two being especially powerful for Nahida's personal damage. On top of that, you gain crit damage, and its effect will last for 10 seconds on a 30 second cooldown, making it especially good for short fights or for a burst of damage. The Solar Pearl is nice for the crit rate and the effect, notably if you are using Nahida on field, as using normal attacks will buff your skill damage and vice versa. With that said, some other good off field options include the Wandering Everstar, which gives you elemental mastery and a bit of an attack buff to your team, so it's a pretty good option overall, especially with the refinements. And the Magic Guide can also be a pretty good option for a free to play weapon if you don't have others that I mentioned, especially from off field 
build, but just in general, because it gives you a lot of elemental mastery and then an effect that will buff your damage against opponents affected by Hydro or Electro, which can actually happen quite often. While Nahida applies a lot of Dendro and this effect can be a bit inconsistent, the buff is still pretty decent, especially when paired with the elemental mastery on the stat, making it a good free to play option. If that wasn't enough weapon options, there's more. The Favonius Codex, uh, while it is a bit niche, can actually be really good and sometimes even your best option in teams where you're using Nahida on field and need energy for your supports who can have very high energy requirements. This is especially good with refinement and does depend on your playstyle. Speaking of niche options, the Hakushin Ring, while it isn't my personal favorite, can be good in teams where you're running Electro and Hydro characters and assuming your Nahida also needs the energy recharge on the stat, it can be a pretty okay option. Lastly, for another on field option, the Map Amari can be okay for its effect in Elemental Mastery, but it is not that great from off field, in which case it wouldn't be better than a Magic Guide. And so that about sums up the weapon options. Looking back, I could have split it up in maybe a more structured manner, but I just tried to cover all the weapons one by one that are really good and why and when they are good, so I hope that helped. With that said, now I will put an exact weapon ranking on screen, well, two of them for two different playstyles, but do keep in mind, this should just be used for a general ranking. There has been a lot of math done behind them, but it does depend on your substats, your teams, your rotations, and your playstyle, so the exact weapon ranking for you can vary based on all of those factors. I do want to take the time to reiterate that for the Witsit, it is especially good when you can clear in one rotation or when you can actually make use of the uptime on its effect, making it a bit more niche than it might seem, but overall a good option. So many of the four stars that I mentioned are really powerful. The Magic Guide is a great free to play option, and then the five stars like Kagura's Verity and the new Teapot Weapon are all great options for your Nahida if you do have them. Because of that, feel free to pick the best option that you have depending on your playstyle. All right, now with that said, here's some more information I want to give you guys about Nahida, some advanced tips to get the most value out of her kit. First of all, I very quickly want to say that if you don't have your Nahida level 90, make sure you do it as it's very important for Dendro reactions, which will scale uh, among other things on your level. Another tip I can give you guys is actually regarding your charge attacks. Now, while it's not always optimal to charge attack, if you do choose to do it, because it does have a different Dendro application uh, ICD than your normal attacks, you should know that you can cancel it very quickly. This is either through jump cancels or dash cancels. And as you guys can see, as soon as the animation starts, you can literally instantly cancel it very quickly. And it's honestly impressive. So something to keep in mind. Something else I wanted to mention is actually regarding your elemental burst and how long of an animation it has. While it is obviously very pretty and a very good ability, you do need to be mindful of when and how you use it because of how long the animation actually is, which can eat at the uptime of other abilities you might be using, like for example, Syncho, Yalan, or Beidou's bursts, which you want to be maximizing the uptime of and not spending it inside of your Nahida's burst where you aren't able to normal attack. Because of that, I highly recommend using your Nahida's abilities first, like your skill and your burst, before swapping to your other characters and using their bursts, generally speaking, in order to maximize the uptime of every ability, although this can depend on your team. Now moving on, let's talk about Nahida's constellations. I do want to start by saying that Nahida is one of the strongest characters we've ever gotten, even as just a C0 5 star. So keep that in mind and understand that you don't need constellations for her to be broken, but she does have some pretty good ones. The first one I want to talk about, and I know this isn't in order, but it's actually her second constellation, as this is probably going to be the stopping point for most people that want to go for constellations, as this will allow your transformative reactions such as Burning, Bloom, Hyper Bloom, and Burgeon to be able to crit and it will give 20% crit rate and 100% crit damage to those reactions. On top of just that, is that you will also decrease the defense of opponents who are affected by Quicken, Aggravate, and Spread. Because of that, this constellation will affect basically every single Dendro reaction you could be proccing in every different team comp for Nahida, making it just really good overall, but again, not a needed one. With that said, for your other constellations, your first one is okay. It gives you an extra either Pyro, Electro, or Hydro character for your burst effect. So if you have one Hydro, it'll count as two, which means it's okay for a constellation, but it isn't the best overall, and it's more of a stepping stone for your C2. C3 and 5 increase your talent levels, with C3 being the more important one. C4 gives your Nikita more elemental mastery based on how many opponents are affected by her skill. And when there are four or more enemies that have that seed on them, you'll gain 160 EM, which is nice, but not the biggest deal in the grand scheme of things. Lastly, your sixth constellation is honestly a really good one. In fact, this ability will give you just a ton more dendro damage uh, when you are normal or charge attacking on Nahida inside of your burst, giving her an even stronger role from on field. This bonus damage will be considered elemental skill damage and scales very highly on your EM, as you can see, which is going to be good for standard Nahida builds. While I haven't tested exactly how good this constellation is in practice, in theory it looks really powerful as a C6 for more damage when your Nahida is on field and normal or charge attacking, so it looks very strong for a C6. And lastly, in case you're wondering, I do want to point out that I don't plan on getting constellations for my Nahida, this is just the media server, so I have access to all of them, but I do plan on keeping mine C0, with my personal recommendation being either keeping her C0 or getting C2 if you want to start 
stop pretty early on as it is quite powerful. All right, now moving on, let's get into one of the most important sections of this video regarding Nahida's team. Now, I do want to start by saying that being the Dendro Archon and the best Dendro support we have by far, she will fit any Dendro reaction team as either an on-field enabler or an off-field support. Because of that, there are so many teams where she shines based around Dendro reactions that honestly, the sky's the limit. With that said, I'm going to give you guys the main archetypes where she works, her best teams, and also kind of explain why they work and what characters you want in every slot. And so with that out of the way, let's begin. First of all, you can run Nahida in a Hyper Bloom team where you pair her with an Electro and a Hydro support, with the Electro support being a character who's going to stack Elemental Mastery with your Dendro and Hydro characters. A good example of Electro characters can be, you know, an EM, Kuki, or Raiden build that can proc those Hyper Blooms, or even just generic Electro supports like Fischl, Yaimiko, or even Lisa can all work. This Electro character can constantly proc Hyper Bloom and sometimes even quicken if your Hydro application isn't too fast, but that does depend on what team you're trying to go for. With that said, for your Hydro option, there's so many. You can go for fast Hydro pliers like Sing Chu or Yulan, who'll deal insane amounts of single target damage and apply Hydro very rapidly, or have a bit slower off-field application like Kokomi, and pretty much all of these can work. In these type of teams, you would typically be using your Nahida on field to apply a ton of Dendro, as none of the other characters can really be on field, unless you choose to run a Hydro option like Ayato, who can actually spend time on field doing good damage while also applying Hydro and letting you Hyper Bloom. The last slot in a Hyper Bloom team is going to be Flex, and your Flex options are going to be the generic ones that you want in most Nahida teams, being either Kazua, Sucrose, or even like Zhongli for a shield with resistance shred, Albedo for elemental mastery, or even a second Hydro character or Electro. Although if you do run another Electro, do make sure they're not stealing your Hyper Blooms as you want your character who's stacking elemental mastery to be Hyper Blooming, which is why someone like Beto can be especially good as Beto's burst does not bounce to the cores and will not proc Hyper Bloom. With that said, there are many variations of this team, but the general idea is going to be to run uh, Nahida with an Electro character, a Hydro character, and then a Flex slot. Similarly, for Bloom teams, I highly recommend running these if you have Nilu. I believe Nahida and Nilu have an inherent synergy with one another that is very strong because of how much Dendro application Nahida can give you. In fact, while Nahida's off-field Dendro application isn't insane, it can be enough if you pair her with another Dendro character like the Dendro Traveler, or you can use your Nahida on field, which is what I recommend, and then pair her with three Hydro characters, Nilu and two others, to manage to constantly apply Bloom because of how much Dendro application your Nahida is giving you, allowing your Hydro damage to be absolutely insane by just constantly doing as many Blooms as possible, being especially good in AoE. What you want to make sure to have in this team though is one character who's stacking Elemental Mastery and proccing your Blooms, in this case Kokomi, and Barbara works basically just as well, like very similarly. Make sure you level these characters to 90, stack full Elemental Mastery, and they will be proccing Blooms for you. Do keep in mind your last slot can either be an offensive like crit damage dealer or someone who's also stacking Elemental Mastery, like for example an off-field Ayato where you're using his burst and doing good damage. Keep in mind if you are running Nahida on field, you want to make sure you're applying as much Dendro as possible to make sure your Hydro character is blooming, but either way, stacking EM on Nahida can make her blooms okay as well. With that said, feel free to run two Dendro characters and two Hydro also as another viable option. Moving on, you can also run Quicken teams with Nahida, where you pair her with a powerful Electro carry and constantly proc both Spread and Aggravate, increasing your Dendro and Electro damage. And because of the passive Dendro application you're getting from off-field through your elemental skill, these teams can be absolutely insane. In a team comp like this, you want to run powerful Electro carries like either Sino, Kaching, or honestly like any Electro, Yai Miko can work both from on or off field, as off field is like the more standard play style, but even on field, her normal attacks can be pretty decent, especially if you're quick swapping. Beto can work as well, and obviously so can characters like Fischl or Kuki. In general, I do recommend having two Electro characters in these teams, one being a good off field support, like a few of the ones I mentioned later, like Fischl, Beto, or Kuki, and then having an on field one like Sino or Kaching, or even someone like Yai who can weave in normal attacks alongside Nahida to basically get the most damage out of these teams. I believe Quicken teams are very good for Nahida and can work very well. Lastly, your last slot in this team is going to be extremely flexible. If you're running a healer, an electro healer like Kuki, you don't need a defensive option, so you could go someone like Kazuo or Sucrose or a more offensive support to buff your damage. If not, a defensive option like Zhongli or an Anemo healer like Jin or Sayu can also work well. Lastly, I wanted to say that in these teams, since you are proccing spread, Sihnari can be a decent on-field option, as this sort of team archetype works with many different variations on every single slot. Next up, you can also run Burgeon teams, which are very flexible, but basically you're running Dendro with Hydro and Pyro. Your pyro option being either Toma, Shangling, or you can do some like Kazua Bennett things, especially with C6 Bennett. And then your last slot being flexible. You can do someone like Fischl, who can help you with single target enemies, or you can even run just a generic Anemo support to buff your elemental damage. Moving on, you can also run some Burn Melt teams, notably Burn Melt Ganyu, where you're proccing burning, but also managing to melt Ganyu with perfectly timed charge attacks, melt all of her charge shots, and actually deal really good damage. Now, the problem with this team is that it's very difficult to play. You need to make sure your abilities of Ganyu and Zhongli are either not being pressed 
chest or not hitting enemies, or at least not disrupting your reactions. Follow the order of using your Nahida and your Pyro first, setting up for your Ganyu to just spam charge shots, and then charge shotting either almost frame perfectly, so very fast, or doing it a bit delayed, which I don't recommend. But for more information on how this works and why it sometimes doesn't, check out my last video where I go more into it, as I mainly did that to not have to repeat it in this guide and make it too long. With that said though, keep in mind this team works, but the timing is very strict, and you generally want to get Ganyu's second charge shot in before Nahida's elemental skill passive procs from off field and reapplies Dendro to the enemy, which is why this team works, because you can manage to constantly apply burning between your charge shots and then leave just the pyro on the enemy to where you can burn it with Ganyu, but I, again, I explained it better in my last video, and I don't want to make this guide too complicated. Now with that said, there's a lot of other just random team variations that work because they work with Dendro, therefore they're going to work with Nahida, like Hyper Fridge if you've heard of it, or mix and matching just a bunch of Dendro reactions together with Nahida as your either on-field driver or off-field support. Teams with Shang Ling and also teams with the child can work, although they aren't my personal favorite. And my general recommendations overall for Nahida are to play her in Dendro reactions like either Burgeon or especially Quicken, Hyper Bloom, or uh, Nilu Bloom teams, depending on the characters you have and what you prefer. And so as you can see, Nahida can fit pretty much any Dendro team, and I made sure to showcase a ton of different ones throughout the video. But now for the showcase section of this video, I'm going to include a Nahida Nilu Bloom team as they have really good synergy with one another. And if you're wondering my Nahida build, typically in most teams, I run her on Sac Frags for Deepwood uh, on whatever has best substats for me. So EM, Dendro, and Crit. But in a Nilu Bloom team specifically, I'm going to be stacking Elemental Mastery on every piece. Lastly, in case you're wondering, my Nahida is Constellation Zero with uh, Sacrificial Fragments as the weapon and 686 talent levels. With all that out of the way, I hope you enjoyed the guide and I hope you'll enjoy the showcase. Let's go. And so yeah, that's about it. Nahida is one of the strongest 5 stars we've ever gotten. The Dendro Archon, incredible in any Dendro team you want to put her in. And just overall in the meta, Dendro teams are really good. So obviously a character that can be ran on or off field as the best Dendro option is going to naturally be good as well. Oh yeah, and by the way, if that wasn't enough, you can also use your skill for like exploring and it's kind of broken because you can just collect everything. So yeah, this character is pretty insane. Hope you guys enjoyed the guide and as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.